I can have your attention in the media center and upstairs in the press box, we will begin today's post race for the Hollywood Casino 400. And we're joined by the runner up finisher of today's race, Kurt Busch, driver of the number one Monster Energy Haas Automation Ford for Stuart Haas Racing. Kurt, uh, you know, wild, wild race out there. You're able to bring this home second. Please walk us through your day. Uh, for us, we had a real adventurous day. Actually, I brushed the wall early on and got a lap down and had to uh, dig out of that hole all day. And, um, you know, for the, the call early to stay out and then to uh, put on scuff tires to limp it home through one of the stages, uh, that was a gutsy call by Tony Gibson. And I have to say, you know, hats off to Gibson for that because that put us back on the same sequence with the leaders and the tires. And that, that gave us the same amount of sets of stickers uh, that we could use towards the end of the race. But man, I, I tell you, the, the restarts when you have scuffs and you have a couple heat cycles on them, they're just not the same tire. And guys are buzzing the tires, guys are sliding all over. I was one of them. Um, and you know, the big accident on the back, um, it just, these tires, you feel like you've got them under control. And then uh, the next thing you know, you don't uh, because the cars are really um, you know, unstable once they get a couple heat cycles on them. But all in all, uh, Tony Gibson deserves this second place finish. Um, he got on me pretty hard on Saturday morning after qualifying. He said, you know, we got a brake problem. I said, what do you mean? He goes, you know, you didn't use brake and that's why we didn't run good in round two and run three. I'm like, man, I never use brake in qualifying. So he actually really pissed me off. And I spent all race pretty agitated. And at the end, I made sure I used brake and brought her home in second. We are also joined by today's uh, third place finisher, and that is none other than Ryan Blaney, driver of the number 21 Omnicraft Auto Parts Ford for the Wood Brothers Racing, advancing on into the round of eight in the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. You know, Kurt had an adventurous run. You had to start all the way from the back to come home third. Please walk us through your day. Yeah, it was a long day uh, for sure, especially coming from the back. And um, we made decent ground before the competition caution and uh, we were able to work on our car before the first stage end. Uh, and honestly, it's hard to really work on your car when you're coming from the back like that because you, you're in traffic and you don't really know what you need when you get out you know, in a little bit cleaner air. So that was kind of hard to work on it. Uh, early on in the race, but we made a good call of uh, pitting early during the first stage and then staying out with maybe 10 laps on our tires and we were able to hold hold some uh, guys off uh, and, and run pretty good in the first stage and that really set us up, you know, in the cycle to pit with the, you know, the front group. So uh, that really helped out, but really proud of the effort uh, after, you know, the deal that happened Friday, um, having to start in the back and then coming back and, and having a pretty fast car there at the end. Uh, really all race is, uh, shows some, some pretty great resilience of the Wood Brothers team, and it uh, definitely feels good to be moving on, for sure. Okay, we'll open the floor for questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you. We'll start with Sean, we'll go back to Pat. Uh, Sean Roney, Dos Mundos newspaper here in Kansas City. Um, I, I think Kurt had kind of alluded to this, and this is for both of you. Um, just in, in what ways were you all able to kind of regroup your, your pit crew and, and yourselves as, as drivers with that with that wreck in on lap 199 that took out several vehicles, including the uh, the 19 car. In all honesty, you just have to be in the right place at the right time. And I'd say today I spent 99% of my restarts on the bottom lane, uh, and that's just the way it unfolded. So I, I would I would really look at Lady Luck on that as the first reason why we were able to escape that situation. And secondly, I mean, yeah, you're driving cautiously on the restarts with scuffs because guys are able to get sideways really easy. And it, you just hope that you're in the right place and you're able to make a move to get away from all the trouble. Yeah, uh, pretty much what Kurt said. I was right behind him uh, on the bottom when that happened. And uh, it's, this tire is unforgiven at this racetrack. And I saw the 77 get really loose. And when someone gets that free, uh, and that sideways, there's a 50% chance he's going to come back up from the field. And unfortunately, that's what happened. But, uh, you know, some of that is, is luck for sure, being on the bottom and, and being able to get clear of that. Uh, you know, and we've both been in positions to where we've been in the wrong spot at the wrong time and been caught up in it. So it's just kind of luck of the draw on one of those deals. But, um, you know, you try to avoid it the best you can. But sometimes it is uh, fortunate where you're at sometimes. Go to Pat. 
PatCoenNASCAR.com for Ryan. Uh, just curious what your expectations for your team were before the season, and if you've met them or have not exceeded them yet, or I mean, what, where are you? No, I don't really have. I didn't really have any expectations before the year. To be honest with you, I don't really set that stuff uh, up in my mind. I just kind of go out and uh, and just try to perform to the best of our abilities, and uh, whatever happens, happens. And um, you know, I think we've done a great job this year. I, I would uh, say this is probably uh, the the most fun I've ever had racing. Uh, with uh, with anybody, whether it's you know no matter what car, and uh, they just make it a, a really fun year, and, and just to be competitive and, and still be in this thing is just a bonus, to be honest with you. And, uh, so I didn't really have any goals, expectations. I just wanted us to do well and uh, see where it you know ended up, and, and it's going pretty decent for us right now. So hopefully we can keep that going. Do we have any questions up in the press box? Tom, um, Kurt, so many times you're on the bad end of lady luck. I mean, you know, to finally just kind of get around everything and, and put it together and finish second. You, is this something you guys can build on, the 41 team can build on for the rest of the season? Yeah, it was nice to have things unfold in our favor today, um, even though I, I brushed the wall and, and got us a lap down early. Um, the mentality that I've been trying to accept right now is run for 10th and try not to push the car too hard and you know anything above tenth is icing on the cake, and it, you just go where where you can. And I've been trying to drive it too hard. You know, there's guys like a seven-time champion who spun in front of me today, uh, just because of the insecurity that these cars have when when they're side by side and the uh, the way that they're affected by the air. And so I know for us, we're not on the positive side of the grip level curve. <laughs> we're, we're right behind it. And so I just need to keep the car at that level. And yeah, we'll try to build on it. Um, it's a matter of just keeping track of the adjustments throughout the race and making sure that we use every set of sticker tires that we possibly can and get the most out of sticker tires. When we have scuffs, we struggle. We're a 15th place car on scuffs. Additional questions from the press box? None at this time, thank you. Any more questions down here in the deadline room? Well, gentlemen, congratulations on your finish today. Good luck next week in Martinsville. If I can have your attention here in the media center and up in the press box, we will begin our winner's press conference for today's 17th annual Hollywood Casino 400. And we're joined by team owner Barney Visser of the number 78 Bass Pro Shops Tracker Boats Toyota for Furniture Row Racing, and general manager Joe Garoni Barney, we're going to start with you. This is seven wins now this season for that 78 car, the most of it, uh, for a car in a single season since 2013. What has led to that success? I, it's just a combination of everything. Uh, Martin is just, and, and we say it every time we get in front of a microphone, but Martin is uh, he's just on fire right now, and uh, every call he makes uh, seems to be the exact call, what he needs in the car. Uh, the guys are able to give them, and uh, it makes all the difference. Joe, it seemed the, the 78 team was able to maintain its composure today and really work back from that penalty on the restart. Uh, how nervous were you after uh, being assessed that penalty and, and you know working your way back to the field? Uh, it was certainly concerning. Uh, that's uh, a big mountain to climb, to try and come back from that. And uh, it, it does show, though, the strength that the guys have. It's uh, whether it's the race car or you're off at the beginning of the race and the adjustments have to be made and they, they nail the adjustments, we just stretched it out over the whole race this time to come back from the deficit that we created. Okay. We're going to open the floor for questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We will get a wireless microphone to you. Questions from here? Let's go to Bob and we'll work our way around. I'm Bob Hawker, ESPN. I have two. The first, um, how emotional was this whole day considering the tragedy last night uh, oh yeah it was extremely emotional we uh, uh, don't think I've ever gone through anything like that or any of the guys uh, the the nice thing is they're a tight race team everybody rallied together on on both the 77 and 78 and uh, just you know kept focused on what we needed to do to do and uh, James was a friend to everybody and a good worker and or yeah, I, I don't even, it's hard to talk about. Uh, he worked on both the 77 and the 78. 
his hands were on the 78 car going through inspection uh, yesterday and preparing it and uh, it's just amazing that we're able to win the race and, and win it and to honor him and his family. And then also, um, no offense to you all, but there's a lot of people who think that the 42 was would have been the best car at Homestead and they got eliminated today. How how big of a deal is that in your run for the championship? Yeah, we didn't get there, so I don't know that he would have been the best, but I could see why they would think that he might be. He uh, is really talented there. And I know we've struggled in the past. I, I wish we he, he could have made it, and I hope we make it so we could have proven that out, but it didn't happen, so... We'll look forward to continuing to try and get there and get it done. Additional questions from down here in the deadline room. Let's go to Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. I think Chris Gale tweeted um, that typically both teams, whenever you win, don't always go to victory lane. Obviously, the other team has something else to do. But mentioned that both teams were in victory lane today because of what happened last night. How? What did that mean to have everybody there together in that sense? Uh, it was something a little different, I guess, for, for, for your team. It was terrific. It meant everything. You know, we've talked about it before, just in general. It, it's, you know, you get broke apart and everybody's got their jobs and you separate. And it was, this was the time to come together. So I'm glad we didn't do it before. And it was to honor James. So it was, it was perfect. Any questions from upstairs in the press box? No questions in the press box. Come back here to Bob. Barney, I don't know if you've seen the points, but you have fi you're up 52 points, I think, on fourth. Um, I know anything can happen, but how, how nice is it to have at least that little bit of a cushion? Well, it's nice to be running like this. Um, of course, it's great to have that kind of cushion. Uh, we are fairly comfortable compared to other years. Uh, and it's easy to get bounced out. Um, anything can happen. So uh, I don't know if it's mathematically impossible for us not to make it. I, it. It would be, but things happen, as you know, and you watch some of these other cars. You watch what happened to the 42. Uh, shouldn't have happened, but, but there it is. Additional questions? Gentlemen? Congratulations on the victory. Good luck next week in Martinsville. Thanks. Thank you. If I could have your attention here in the media center, we'll continue on with our post-race media availability, and we're joined by the winning crew chief, Cole Pern, crew chief of the number 78 Bass Pro Shops Tracker Boats Toyota for Furniture Row Racing. And Cole, I know your team was racing today with heavy hearts. Uh, getting back to Victory Line had to make that even more special for you today. Yeah, still uh, still pretty surreal at this point. Um, you know, uh, obviously a lot happened last night. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, you just, uh, we were kind of all focused on what we had to do today and, you know, knew that was the, the best thing we can do for Jim. He's a, a true racer, um, you know in the purest form. So I know that uh, that's what he would have wanted. And, and then to be able to get to victory lane and um, was a, you know, silver lining for sure. Uh, still uh, still <laughs> makes it you know, a pretty tough day. Go ahead and open the floor for questions. We'll start with Todd and work our way around. Uh, hey, Cole, Todd Paul with Kansas City Star. I just, um, first of all, did it have any impact not having your fabricator just in terms of what you guys were trying to do today? And then um, also, I mean, I, was he out with other crew members? And, and how shaken up were some of those guys overnight, you know, having, having to go through that? Yeah, I mean, it affects us for sure. He's, uh, you know, he works, you know, on both cars. And, you know, is a key, you know, key kind of role, you know, getting cars through tech and stuff like that, you know. So uh, definitely, uh, definitely hurts you not having him here. Um, yeah, they were, uh, you know, they went out uh, go-kart racing last night um, as a group. And... Uh, yeah, he uh, he was excited to go, and I know they were just sitting there, and he um, he had a heart attack and kind of killed over when they're when they're done. I know he just texted his wife not long before that, saying telling her how good a time he was having. Um, so that's uh, take a little bit of solace in that, you know, that he was uh, happy in his last moments. Go next to Bob, and then the Holly. 
of Bob Cocker's ESPN Ave too. The first off, what, were, were you or Martin there? Uh, no, no, I was not. And um, also, I wanted to know what you thought about uh, Larson getting knocked out, uh, considering that they're so strong at home still. Yeah, uh, it's crazy. I mean, I, I think it just shows you, you know, everyone makes a big deal of the bonus points, but no, nothing is sacred by any means. You know, uh, you can you can have a couple, a little bit of trouble, and you know, especially like they had it blowing up before the for the end of the first stage. You know, you walk away with basically nothing. So, it's a uh, it can happen to anybody, um, you know, we're very well aware of that. So I think uh, we got to dot our I's and cross our T's the next three weeks, you know, to, to make sure we make it to Homestead. Holly? Holly Kane, NASCAR.com. Cole, could you just talk about how you guys have been able to maintain this high level of excellence and keep winning? It wasn't just something you came out of, you know, came out of Daytona, you know, the early races and did well. You have managed to keep it going the whole way and how important that is. Oh, yeah, it's huge, but I think it's just a testament to our group. You know, we uh, we push every week like it's, you know, the most important race of the season to that point. So I think uh, if you have that mindset, you know, that's what's going to keep you uh, keep you near the front of the pack. And, you know, we've been fortunate enough to have strong cars, and we continue to work to get them stronger. And um, I don't know. I mean, we just uh, we have, you know, a really set program that we run every week and just how we approach the weekend. And I think, uh, you know, it's just a testament to our refinement of that over the time and then just – the hard work everybody at Toyota, JGR, and Furniture Row. We'll go next to Todd, then to Brendan, and then back to Holly. Uh, Todd Engel with the Kansas City Star. I think it was during the red flag where I think Martin came over the radio and said, hey, I think we have a chance to win this thing. And obviously, uh, with the success you guys have had on mile and a half tracks, it's well founded. But uh, were you sort of thinking along the same thing whenever? Uh, what was your thought process, I guess, whenever he came across and said that to you? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, after everything that happened, we were starting, you know, the final stage with decent spot, you know, somehow. So I think, uh, you know, then he, he knocked off a really good restart, and we missed that wreck, and, you know, all of a sudden, boom, we're fourth, sitting with better tires than anybody in front of us. So, you know, you think, uh, holy cow, we're in a pretty favorable position at this point. Brennan? Cole, Brennan Mark, Charlotte Observer. You obviously last night was so tough, everything that happened. Did you guys have anything special that you said to each other today when you got out there? Or, you know, I don't, I don't know if you guys said anything to each other when you first got out there today. Uh, no, I mean, we uh, we all saw each other last night. You know, quite a few of us went to the hospital. Um, you know, we were there till after midnight last night. And, uh, you know, we all kind of met back at the hotel and, you know, just hugged each other. <laughs> and, I mean, nothing you really can say. You know, I think... Uh, you know, Greg Emmer, you know, are kind of like second car chief. Uh, him and Gr him and Jim were the closest. You know, they were roommates, and you know, I think about him having to, you know, call his wife last night, and and then pack his stuff up this morning, and just uh, just really difficult. Go to Holly, then to Dustin, then to Bob. This is kind of a difficult question after after answering that, but I just wondered if you could kind of describe the vibe of the team right now. I mean, you guys have had this success. It keeps going. I mean, do you have to kind of temper it down a little bit because you guys are doing so well, or do you buy into that, or just talk about that? Uh, I, I don't think so. I think, uh, you know, we uh, we know what the end prize is, and, and we, uh, we haven't lost sight of that, you know, by any means. So I think uh, the good thing about, you know, getting wins is we can – we can uh, enjoy them, you know, because, I mean, something could happen to us, like happened to 42 today at Homestead. And, you know, with this format, you can you can win 35 out of 36 races and lead everything but the last lap, and then, boom, you're not the champion. So it's, uh, you know, you got to grasp every win and, and enjoy it and, uh, you know, take all those highs, you know, just in case something something happens in the last race. Dustin? Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Um, in what ways, how challenging has this year been in terms of just the emotional things you guys went through with, with Martin and, and Sherry with what you went through before Watkins Glen and this, I, I can't imagine what you guys have gone through this year. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, even before any of this happened, like my wife and I had put our, our dog down last week after we won Charlotte, you know, that we've had for 13 years. So it was like, you know, we're sitting here coming off a win and lose, like, you know, close member of her family. And it's just like, man, I don't I don't know if regular life is, is supposed to be like this. So, and then, you, you know, you have this going, and I don't know, it just uh, it keeps on going for some reason. Um, 
you know, it would be a lot nicer just to have all the highs and, and not have the lows. But uh, I don't know. That's just the way life is, and you know, we're getting well, we're getting the full circle of it right now. Go to Bob. Bob Hawker, CSPN. Would it have been more difficult to perform today in light of the tragedy if you had had not yet advanced? Like, if you had not, if you were coming in here with needing a certain finish. Oh would, yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't even, I hadn't even thought of that, honestly. I mean, obviously that would have been even more difficult. I mean, we got called on a restart violation because I didn't, wasn't paying attention to drivers meeting, I guess, because um, I guess they talked about it and I didn't. Martin and I were talking about what happened last night and I flat just wasn't paying attention. So, I mean, uh, you know, I think, uh, I don't know. Yeah, anything could have, anything could have made it that much difficult, you know. It was hard just trying to keep up with what was going on to the other guys. You know, I can't imagine what was going on if it was uh, us involved. Head upstairs at the press box. Any questions in the press box? Please, SpencerMotorsport.com. Cole, with everything that you have been through from your best friend to, you know, the other things that have happened, I mean, it just keeps piling on, but you remain so zen during adversity. And you guys had two things that happened today and you still keep it together, and you keep Martin together, and you guys persevere. Um, is it just the way you're wired? Uh, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Um, must be. I don't know. It's uh, it's not easy at times, you know. I think, uh, you know, early, especially early on, you know, getting knocked out of the lead, you just it was tough, and then loose wheel, and then, you know, saving saving fuel in the middle of the race. It's just crazy, and then. Uh, I don't know. We just uh, we kept seeing how the situation was changing and trying to make the best call we could at the time. And you know, I think that's the only way we really know how to do it. Additional questions from the press box? None at this time. Thank you, Todd. Uh, hey, Cole. Uh, just curious. Do you have uh, some sympathy, maybe, for for Kyle Larson after last year? You guys had you know one of the best cars, and and something similar happened to you that takes you out of the championship hunt, and then. Uh, you kind of feel for for what that that team is going through. Absolutely, I mean they're uh, they're a phenomenal race team, you know, that deserve to be in it um, by all means. But uh, you know, that's the the entertainment format that we have right now is you know you know not. Uh, I mean it's it's shifted a bit, you know, this year with bonus points to try and to help the better cars get through. But it's still, uh, you know, you have something like that happen like they did, and especially with Talladega in the round, um, it's. Uh, you know, it can just happen in a hurry. I think that's why we were so emotional when we won Charlotte, just, you know, knowing what it meant. Because um, if, uh, you know, we go in there, we wrecked last week, you know, and they finished better than we did. Um, you know, if we hadn't won Charlotte we, and blown up today, we would have been out. So it's uh, it's just, it's crazy. Uh, it's just uh, you can't ever be safe, for sure. Well, Cole, our heart goes out to you and your guys. Uh, congratulations on the win, and uh, good luck. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> If I can have your attention here in the media center and up in the press box, we are joined by today's race winner, the 17th annual Hollywood Casino 400, and that is none other than Martin Truex Jr., driver of the number 78 Bass Pro Shops Tracker Boats Toyota for Furniture Row Racing. I know this has been a uh, roller coaster 24 hours for the team, Martin, but let's focus on the, the positives. Today, you won for the seventh time uh, this season. You, uh, you led more than 2,000 laps in this season. You became the first driver to win four consecutive races on mile and a half tracks. Big day for this 78 team. How, how wild and wonderful is this season becoming for you? Uh, it's, just, it's still unbelievable. <laughs> I just got to pinch myself, so, you know, on some of these days. Just, uh, it's just un un unreal. Um, Really proud of my team, really proud of everybody, and just a uh, dream come true to drive for them and, and, and just do what we've done all season long. So today was a, a challenge for sure with all the obstacles we faced and uh, all the adversity we had to deal with. But, uh, you know, we just kept our heads down and kept fighting and, you know, found ourselves in the lead late and, uh, and took advantage of it. So happy for everybody, uh, all my guys. I know it was um, it was a tough day for them, you know, losing one of their, one of their teammates last night. And... Uh, you know, for all of us just coming together and talking about, hey, let's go win this one for Jim. And uh, we did it. So feels good and uh, really proud of everybody just for 
just for getting through it and having each other's backs and holding each other up and um, and getting out there and, and getting the job done. Okay, we're going to open the floor for questions. We'll start with uh, Brendan, and then go to Bob, and then to Sean. Oh, oh there, I get it. Uh, hey, Martin, Brendan Mark, Charlotte Observer. You said in Victory Lane that you got a text from Cole late last night. What was last night actually like for you? Did you get any sleep? I mean, what, what all went down from your point of view? Yeah, I mean, Cole call, uh, texted me at like 11, 15 or something and said, um, you know, I'm at the hospital. Jim just had a heart attack and they lost him. He couldn't, they couldn't re get him going. So I was like, oh my God, that's awful. What, is there anything I can do? He's like, no, we're just, we're all here. There's nothing we can do. We just want it to be here to be here. And so um, I, I thought about those, those guys a lot, obviously, last night, you know, and, uh, you know, I don't, I don't go to bed too early anyway, so I had a little bit of time to, to think about it and just, um, you know, just a shame, you know, to to see uh, 55 years old to have that. You know, he's got family at home and hard to, it's definitely hard to deal with that. But, um, you know, it, it's part of life, unfortunately, and, and we uh, we got to move on. And today the best we could do was win for him and his honor and, um, you know, just celebrate his life and what he meant to us and uh, the job he did for us. Next to Bob, then to Sean. Uh, Bob Parker, ESPN. How well did you know Jim? Uh, I, mean, I know there's a lot of guys on the crew and stuff, but sure. I was curious how well did you know him? And considering what mm -hmm. you've been through you know, the last few years with Sherry, does that help you kind of manage something like this? Um, honestly, I didn't know him really well. Um, I, I don't know if I've ever had a really conversation with him more than three or four words you know um he was kind of a guy that worked between both cars 77 and 78 he was kind of our, sh our track fabricator so you know he he doesn't you know i didn't see him a whole lot he was just kind of bouncing around but um you know still he's part of our team and he's he's part of you know what makes us who we are our, a lot of our guys are really close with him so it was definitely a lot harder for those guys uh, on our team than it, than it was for me but um, you know, again, I, I think we all come together in times like this, no matter what it is. And, uh, you know, certainly I was there if, if there was anything I could do to make it better on anyone. Um, but definitely there was more guy. There was some guys on our team that it hit, hard, hit harder than others that have, um, you know, grew closer to, to Jim and, and his time at Furniture Row. So, uh, you know, for me personally, I think that uh, over the years I've definitely got better at, you know, being able to get in the car no matter what's going on else in the outside world or in my life uh, to get in there and focus turn my focus to just what I have to do in the next couple hours and you know it's just another example of doing that and uh, focusing on my job and just trying to block out all the noise go to Sean then to Todd then to Jerry uh, Sean Roney Dos Mundos newspaper I'm turning to some other tough stuff that you've had to, to deal with at this track if if memory serves, the last time that you raced here, the race went to red when, when there was the, the, the big pileup and Eric Amarola had to be extricated from the car. Um, are you <coughs> feeling a sense of deja vu on lap 199 when the race goes briefly under, under red and then it goes to, to caution? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's two, two races here in a row that we've had one huge wreck. And I, I was like, I seen it happen, right, literally happen right in front of me, the start of it. And then I seen them all crash in my mirror as I made it through there. And um, I was like, I, I figured that when I got back around the turn two that it was gonna look like a Talladega crash, just cars everywhere and scrap metal and cars and piles and uh, it was crazy. It's just, uh, it was one of those deals where, you know, the way Eric spun, he just, you know, he was running like third. So he was at the front of the pack and everybody was real tight coming off of two. And, this place is so fast, it's pretty hard to slow down. So at, uh, luckily for us, we were on the bottom and, and still barely snuck by. So definitely pretty wild to have two big giant crashes like that here in two races. Go to Todd, then to Jerry. <coughs> well, correct me if I'm wrong, but the thinking and swapping cans in Talladega was to avoid stuff like that. Right? <laughs> telling you. Didn't, um, didn't avoid it. How much, how nice was it though? I mean, there was so much drama you know, as the race unfolded. Um, with with Jimmy and you know with Kyle and with Ryan being cycled to the back of the pack and then with everything that happened with Kenseth w Was it nice to be able to kind of be above that and not have to worry about that cut line? And then I also wanted to know how, how familiar with you were you with uh, The seven man over the wall rule and in a situation like that. How easy would it be for a mistake to be made? 
Um, I'm not real familiar with the role, other than hearing about it the last couple of weeks, especially, you know, because it's been, it was talked about at Talladega with guys trying to fix their cars and the 48 having their issue um, and all that stuff. So it's definitely come up uh, more more frequently this these past few weeks. So I guess we're uh, more aware of it now. And I'm sure it's something that Cole has his arms around and understands and makes sure our guys understand. But you know, situations like today where we had to fight through all those things and all that stuff happening, it's definitely easier when you when you know you're locked in and you don't have to worry about it. You know, had we been on the cut line or or my plus minus a few points today, it would have been a lot harder to deal with what we had to deal with. So, um, you know, the next couple of weeks, it's back to it's back to not being locked in, and um, you never know what can happen. So this was definitely good practice, uh, honestly, to to face the adversity and know we can get through it, which we've had this happen a few times this year. Um, Chicago comes to mind, I think, when we, we had some issues and had to come back through the field to, to, to win that race. So um, anytime you get to practice and be successful at coming through a lot of adversity during a race and, and, and being able to go to victory lane is, uh, is a big confidence booster for the, for the times when the pressure is really on. Jerry. Jerry Jordan, KickingTheTires.net and Performance Racing Network. The guys that are out now, uh, two of them, um, one of them, Matt Kenseth, uh, the other one, probably your biggest, closest competitor with Kyle Larson, uh, and the guy that was probably the favorite to do the best at Homestead. How do you feel? What kind of relief do you have? And or does it suck that you're not going to get to battle with him for the championship? Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, again, I mean, I don't know. There's no guarantee we'll even get to Homestead yet. So uh, one race at a time. You know, I, you, you look at me like I'm crazy, but Larson was plus 20 what today? 29? He was second in points. He didn't make it. So, I mean, where did he finish last week? 15th? Talladega 13th, 15th. So, nobody's – I keep – I've been saying it all year. Everybody looks at – they all say I'm a lock because I got so many playoff points. But I'm telling you, it's, it's not that simple. We got to go out and perform. We can't have an engine failure. We can't get a crash five laps into Martinsville. Um, we just we got to focus on one race at a time and do the best job we can do and uh, try to keep the momentum going. So, to answer your question, um, I really don't care who I'm racing at Homestead. You know, if we can go there and do what we know how to do and get the job done, we'll uh, we'll take care of ourselves. So, um, I'm gonna, I'm looking to go there and try to win my first race that I've ever won there. <laughs> no better time to do it than now. Back to Todd. Uh, Todd Palmer, Kansas City Star again. Cole uh, said that you guys were kind of talking about Jim, uh, apparently in the driver's meeting when they s mentioned not being able to restart below the line. So how, just how surprised were you um, when, when you got that penalty? And what are your thoughts on, because the four car followed you down, but he did not have to go to the back of the pack. Any thoughts on, on the way that all played out? Yeah, it's just the way it is, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, it doesn't make sense to me, but. Uh, I don't make the rules. I don't call them. Uh, in the spring, we did that multiple times uh, during the race and never never even received a warning. Um, and I guess if they said it in the driver's meeting, I need to pay better attention. I, yeah, I didn't hear it, so I guess I need to wake up earlier. <laughs> we have questions up in the press box. I definitely didn't hear it. Huh? It did affect us a lot. It cost us a shot at two two more points. So, um, yeah, you got to get all you can get. Questions from up in the press box? Uh, Chris Knight, catchfence.com. Martin, I just wonder if you could comment on becoming the first uh, cup driver to sweep a weekend at Kansas. Uh, it's amazing, honestly. I mean, I think uh, I think back to really throughout my career here at Kansas and the runs that we've had and the laps that we've led and. You know, heck, even back when I was running for MWR and we hadn't won a race yet and we weren't having the greatest season, we led the most laps here and had a heartbreaking loss. So it's crazy how it works out. And you go through all those years of heartbreaks and leading laps and you're like, what do I got to do to win here? To today having, you know, the penal having a penalty and having a loose wheel and having to come from a lap down. And it's like, you can't do anything wrong. I mean, I can, now I kind of see that <laughs> You know, when you watch the 48 win five championships in a row and it's like they couldn't do anything wrong and it really pissed you off. Well, I guess a lot of people are tired of watching this. <laughs> a lot of the people are like, God, Truex won again? What the heck? You know, so uh, it's it's really neat. It feels unbelievable. And um, I, I just we're having the time of our life. And I, I think we understand that 
that we are, and we're just soaking it all in. So it feels it feels amazing, and uh, it feels good to be on the right side of things for for a while here. Any additional questions from the press box? None at this time. Thank you. Go Thank you all. Appreciate Back you. To Todd, and then to Jerry. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. What? Sorry. Thought you were letting me go. We're not done with you. I, I, I mean, you got to. You, you're the twelfth guy in the modern era to get to two thousand laps led. Um, you uh, uh, now own the single season record. You broke a tie with Carl with five mile and a half wins, and you broke a tie with, uh, I believe, Tony Carl and Casey Kane for most consecutive wins, four in a row on mile and a half. Now, a any significance to any of those for you? I mean, it, I know it's probably something you'll <coughs> think more about after the season, looking back. But it, are, are those some pretty nice milestones to check off? I think they're huge. Yeah, absolutely. To um to win more mile and a half in one year than anyone, that's just crazy. It's a craziness. I mean, it, it, it reminds me of last last year, um, all the, la the the miles we led in the Coke 600, and that no one had ever done that in the in the history of the sport. Just to be to make to be doing things like that this day and age with the competition level the way it is, how close everyone is is just it's unbelievable. It's a credit to my team and all our partners and everybody, honestly, who makes this possible. And, and it just shows that we just have the right combination right now. And uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how, how, why, or what, but it sure does feel good. Jerry, then the Bob, and then we'll wrap here with Sean. Jerry Jordan, KKPowers.net, and Performance Racer Network again. Uh, since you say I'm crazy uh, about locking in You are in the crazy. <laughs> since I'm locking in the homestead, what's the next? You got three in a row coming up. What, what's the next track that you think you probably have the best shot of getting a win and locking yourself in? For sure, Texas. I, I would say out of the, out of the next round, Texas sticks out to me. Um, you know, the repave, mile and a half. But similar to Kentucky, I would I would classify it. You know, mile and a half with newer pavement, flatter flatter corners. Um, it's a challenging place for sure. Uh, we ran we ran decent there in the spring race, but but feel like there's some areas where we know how to get better from what we did there. So I'm optimistic that that'll be a good one for us. But uh, Martinsville is. Um, is a is a challenging little track, and it's been one of the th one of the tracks that I feel like we've been chipping away at and getting closer, and, and we've been kind of knocking on the door of those top fives consistently uh, in, in speed. And um, our short track program's really gotten a lot better this season as well. So I'm looking forward to going there and just hopefully having the best race we've ever had there. That's what we need to do, and uh, that's what we're we're working towards next week. Bob Parker, ESPN. How would you char characterize the mood of your, your team today before the race? And if you had come into this race having, like, being in a position of, like, Jimmy Johnson or Ken Smith in the points, would it have been difficult? Uh, it, like I said earlier, it's definitely easier to, to deal with a day like today when you're locked in. You don't have to worry about, you know, whether it's whether it's the news about Jim and the somber feeling around the, the team and just everybody kind of feeling like they're dragging a bit today um, or just the adversity on the racetrack. All those things are easier to deal with, I guess, when you're, there's not, you know, not at, your whole season's not on the line, I guess. Um, but but it's still something that you have to deal with, and we, I, I thought we everybody did a good job of getting through it. Um, so, yeah, what was the first part of your question? I forget now. <laughs> it was, yeah, I, I would say it was, but it was also uh, kind of in a, in a quiet, fired up fashion, like, Let's go kick their butts for Jim. You know, let's go do it for him. So it was a little bit of both, I'd say. Sean. Um, Sean Roney, Dos Mundos newspaper again. Because you mentioned the 48 car, I'll, I'll bring him up again. I'm guessing it's no big shock. He made it again, didn't he? Yes, he did. Spinning through the grass, still still going on. <laughs> Transfers. Yes, no, no big shock that he did what he did today, huh? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Simple as that. It's not a shock. Well, it, I'll tell you what is shocking, though, that the 42 car lost an engine. That's very shocking. Well, Martin, it's certainly not shocking that you were joining us here today, and uh, good luck on your quest to get that championship. Thank you guys very much for the second time. <laughs>